What's up guys, welcome to the Apple Bite. It's everything good and bad, this time here at Macworld 2009. Now Phil Schiller came out on stage, he got a nice warm round of applause, even if it was from a lot of Apple employees, but we're gonna talk about the announcements that affect you, so let's go hit the floor. We are here with the new 17-inch MacBook Pro. Now what's the big thing about this is its battery. What it's done is its battery has an eight-hour charge. You can do the cycle a thousand times, and really what that means is it has three times the juice of regular batteries, and it lasts for approximately five years. You'll have all the center ports you're used to seeing on a MacBook Pro 17-inch. You have the USB, the gigabit ethernet. You also get the backlit keyboard. Now this machine will come in at a 2.66 Intel Core 2 Duo processor. Now the other thing on this machine, it's the only MacBook that offers the matte screen finish. Why would you do that? Phil says he likes it. I'm going to show the glossy version because that's my favorite. I don't think you do. So anyways, check out the new MacBook Pro 17 inch. It'll be available in late January for $2,799. Okay guys, let's talk iTunes. Behind me, nothing has cosmetically changed, but there are a few new features. Now first of all, you've been used to the 99 cent tracks. In April, they're actually going to be going to three tiers. Tracks from 69 cents, 99 cents, and a dollar and 29 cents. So the music labels are going to determine that. Another thing about the iTunes store that people have been waiting for is it will be entirely DRM free so you can do whatever you want with those tracks and the final announcement is the fact that on your iPhone if you wanted to buy music you can only do it if you were connected to Wi-Fi now you can do it whether you're on Wi-Fi or 3G now you guys know Macworld isn't all about the announcements at the keynote this year we have some movies that you can check out so let's kick it back to the studio I'm here with Kobe and Ron Shelley these guys are the directors producers co-writers everything you could think of for the movie Machead so we're gonna take a look at a clip and we'll be right back How's the Mac changed my life? It's kept me isolated, it's kept me from having a wife, it's kept me from having a life. First of all, I've never knowingly slept with a Windows user, ever. Now you guys interviewed a lot of different types of characters. You kind of saw some of the old school, hardcore zealots. How have you seen with some of the kind of new generation, new school fans, how are they different? The way that we show it in the movie is the, the, the iPhone line uh, compared to the, the keynote in 2007. Uh, that is where in the iPhone uh, in New York you can see really the change uh, between uh, those hardcores and, uh, and the new generation of people. You guys yourselves, are you fanboys? Because people would assume that, oh, you're making a Mac movie, that you guys are Mac heads yourselves. Are you guys? We're more filmmakers than uh, Mac heads. And I think it was important for us uh, to keep this position in order for us to be able to explore this in a rather objective uh, point of view. Now that the company is changing in more of more into a mainstream brand, how have those fans changed? Apple is really becoming or always been a brand, but you know, as the, as the, the more successful successful they are, I mean. They don't really feel that threatened as they used to, do, to be in the 90s. If we look at the future, we can really see that Apple is becoming a brand, really. Now, you guys were isolated together. You worked on this movie together for about a year and a half <laughs> as brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys must really like each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for this uh, to be over so I can just <laughs> get away from my brother. Okay, so check out the movie, and we'll see you guys later. Okay guys, now an announcement that you might not have really cared about was the improvements to iWork 09. They did revamp Keynote and Pages, so you have a few new bells and whistles, but they also released iWork.com. It's basically a beta program that allows you to post your document online, edit, and collaborate with other users. It's kind of like Apple's version of Google Docs, so we'll see how all that pans out. All right guys, we're gonna take a look at iLife 09. It was one of the big announcements at the Keynote, and we're gonna first take a look at iPhoto. Some of the new features that they introduced was a feature called Faces, where it actually uses face recognition to help you organize your photos. You can tag multiple people, and it then separates them by the pictures that they are in. Some really smart stuff. Another thing they have is called Places. The iPhoto application actually organizes this by the places you've been, so you can see a nice little map. There's actually pins that tell you where your photos have been taken, so that's another cool thing. Another piece of the iLife 09 suite is iMovie 09, and what they did is they added advanced drag-and-drop editing and precision editing. 
editing. So what this allows you to do is be a lot more specific, but also if you have a clip, you can drag and drop it into your timeline and it gives you a variety of options, whether it's effects or transitions or ways to present the video. Really slick and it does it all in real time, which makes it even that more impressive. Another part of iLife 09 is GarageBand 09. And what's new here is artist lessons. So essentially you can learn how to play the guitar, how to play the keyboard, and if you want to, you can go to the lesson stores and for $4.99 you can purchase actual lessons from Sting, Sarah McLaughlin. They'll teach you how to play their songs in a more simplified fashion. So there you have it, some pretty hot picks from myself. Now at the end of the keynote, we got a special appearance by Tony Bennett and I gotta say that Phil Schiller's hair is a lot like Tony's. I don't know what was up with that. Okay, you guys know what to do. Email us at the Applebyte at CNET.com. I want to know what you thought about this year's Macworld. And remember, like always, come back next time for another bite of the apple.